You know, this is a really unique opportunity using the techniques that you, you use for searching um, because we have such a very, very large area. And, you know, you're using a data set that we've generated and this uh, is so much better than using multiple data sets generated by different people from different labs and, you know, all that fuzzy stuff in yeah. there, right? Mm -hmm. So we're taking all that out and we're also dealing with a highly mineralized area. We know that because we've got the samples that are coming out, right? So I would, I would like to distinguish two types of information. One, mm -hmm. the historical information for the, for the location of these two cities. So we'll put together probability maps for that. Then when you get geophysical information, like lack of gold or whatever, mm -hmm. we'll overlay that uh, to say, okay, that, that cuts out certain probability areas in, in the map. The strengths of the Bayesian process, right? Uses all the available data, <coughs> and does it in a principled fashion, but in sort of both objective and subjective, in particular, can incorporate expert opinion, really crucial. And as I was saying before, it produces our, our best estimate of the location of the Golden Cities, given the information available. And, our, and now our understanding of that information and, and the problem is guaranteed to be correct. It's, it's just going to be, given our best understanding of it, we're going to, we're going to act efficiently based on that. It allows you to proceed in a systematic and effective fashion using the information available now, which is really crucial for search plans, search and rescue. You can't say, wait a minute, let's wait till we get more data. You gotta go ahead and try to find the person now. And uh, you know, as more data becomes available, more now, Richard, you can update this. If there's a nice recursion here you can use to update the, the uh, information very simply. You don't have to go back to ground zero and just because this information comes in, you just keep updating these maps. I mentioned that the sort of updates, unsuccessful search, additional, additional stream surveys, and so on. And I discussed this before. Experience shows that these, the search plan is su successful and effective. And um, I gave you this anecdotal evidence. And I told you about the Soviet searches for the Soviet submarines, which were actually able to quantify the increased in effectiveness from using this, this uh, uh, principle and uh, approach to um, search planning. It's, all, it's also a very methodical, principled and methodical approach to search planning, and it pays off. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, the next, uh, the next, ne next steps, which is, we start that today. So, to try to begin the process of determining the prior on the location of the cities, try to Start the discussion here of how we develop likelihood functions for all the uh, survey data that you have, and then finally we'll produce initial, probably produce initial cuts of all these things for you to review with you. And say no, you didn't get that right. Did you consider this? Make sure to really understand the problem correctly, and then producing it all, putting it all together into uh, initial, initial likelihood surfaces and uh, initial density functions for you to take a look at. Then we'll iterate. We understand the problem better, and as more data comes in. And it seems to me that's what you have on the sketch today, it's just exactly right. Let's, let's take the first cut of trying to understand what this, this data means.